Welcome to this introduction video of the Black Dragon Mark II Damascus Forge. We're going to start off with the, the actual forge chamber. Uh, it features a stainless steel logo, Mark II as indicated there, so the Black Dragon logo on it. It's a dual burner forge um, of the Venturi design. Uh, you have got the forge chamber cast out of a high heater factory uh, cement. This is rated at 1600 degrees Celsius. The opening here is 160 millimeters diameter. You have got accessories for the forge, which by the way ship standard with it, which is the back firewall featuring a 50 millimeter gap, and that gets placed on the inside and actually wedged in there temporarily with the supplied cable. Then you've got your forge chamber insert, and this is predominantly made for when you're doing Damascus, so that you don't damage your forge chamber, and that obviously inserts like that. Then what we have is the plumbing at the back. Many people ask me why this is, and we'll get that to that um, at, a, at a later point in this video. You have got the plumbing, which features the, the gauges, the regulator, um, the two main uh, cock open valves, primary for the primary burner, secondary at the back, as well as the needle valve. Then coming over to the, the hosing, these two bull noses will obviously fit onto your LP um, cylinders. Um, as indicated on the actual regulators, an open and shut position. Now the plumbing of the Black Dragon Forge is, uh, looks off, offhand very complicated, but it's actually not. It consists of the two pigtails that go onto your cylinders. You've got two master shuttle valves. Um, you have got a lead and extension valve a line, exactly one meter from your regulator. This is all high pressure. You have got the high pressure regulator. You have got a pressure indicator gauge. Um, you have got the idler valve. Okay. You've got your primary burner. It's currently in the off position or the shut position, and that's your open position. And then your secondary which there is an open and then in shut. Safety. When it comes to safety uh, with regards to the forge, obviously we're running with, with uh, sealed plumbing. Um, all of the parts used on the forge are SABS approved. Um, what we need to do is regularly, and I prefer to do this uh, before I run my forge on a daily basis, um, I would take a refer to the operating instructions um, for the leak detection mixture. And I find that a commercial Leak detector works very, very well of the spray type. But the one that you, you that you use or, or mix with water works tremendously well because it comes in a, in a spray can, a spray format. Uh, you pressurize your system and then spray all the joints everywhere with the leak detector spray, including the ones at the top. Um, and wherever you see bubbles, you would then just tighten the uh, the joints. Now, through time, these things do do uh, tend to go loose, especially if you travel with, with the forge. Uh, but please do regularly check your uh, system for gas leaks. Our forge ships standard with a material rest that's adjusted by turning um, this Allen key screw or cap screw. Um, to increase this, the height of this, what you would need to do, especially if you're using the, the Damascus insert, now obviously the, the forge can be run without it, and uh, as you can see, if you remove that, that the, the material rest is actually designed for that height. Now should you wish to run your forge permanently with the Damascus insert in place, what you'll need to do is just remove this, obviously loosen this screw, remove this completely, um, and then as you can see from that indicator there, what you'll need to do is just heat this, straighten it out again, so it does that and then measure exactly seven centimeters and then do this bend again. This rest, the material rest, will be a lot higher um, and therefore giving you a parallel area to place your material onto. Now to insert the, the firewall chamber or the firewall into your forge chamber, you would insert the, the forge floor um, and uh, then take this, decide on which side out, uh, doesn't really matter. You would place this in there, um, making now sure that your, your firewall, the actual floor, is just lined up at the back. And you'll see that you get around about a 5 millimeter overlap on this here. You would then take your ceramic fiber, take pieces out of this, break it up into smaller cotton balls, for, and then just literally just shove it and wedge it in here. 
Um, now I normally use a an old flat screwdriver and obviously you want to get this as even as possible therefore using smaller pieces it doesn't really matter for it to, to look very uh, neat because you'll be, be finishing this off um, as you go along just by taking a, a screwdriver stubbing it in there but the most the most important part here is to get as much cowl in there and uh, obviously you're going to put in, be putting it in from this side as well as from the, the inside the outside of the forge as well as the inside of the forge and by shoving this in what you're doing and I'm obviously not going to complete this what you'll be creating is you'll actually seal the firewall temporarily in place um, and by moving the firewall in a, into the inside of the forge or to the outside of the forge or completely removing it um, this gives you the flexibility with the forge to uh, either go and do large pieces of, of Damascus or just now, as mentioned earlier I use a, a screwdriver a flat screwdriver just to shove the cable in there and making sure that this is seated properly um, now another thing you can do and obviously the cable is there because I don't know um, as the manufacturer of the forge I don't know whether you actually want your firewall be placed in there permanently whether you want a perfect solid firewall also available from uh, the same person that you, you bought or the establishment that you bought the forge from solid firewalls one with a 50 millimeter um, insert there or vent hole um, this is also a through hole what I mean by that is if you're using large pieces of Damascus you can obviously run it right through your entire forge now just a note on alignment here what you want to do is the actual insert chamber or uh, floor that you've got on the inside of your, your forge needs to align round about horizontally with the bottom of this little hole here so just to recap the bottom of this hole lines up to the insert floor that you've just added now uh, to finish off the, the cable literally just go around the chamber um, this is now inside and outside just by shoving in the cable and this creates a very very tight seal well then firewall has been inserted as you can see it's done very neatly both the outside as well as the inside of the forge and securing that firewall in place now uh, you'll see from the amount of cable that you have got left um, basically you'll be able to refit this firewall um, for whatever reason you want to remove it you're doing a large piece of maskers a large piece of forging uh, you want to forge four guys at the same forge obviously two on that side two on this side then you'll remove this there's enough cable here to refit this chamber or the firewall to the chamber now starting your forge is done in the following procedure obviously these two bull nose fittings will go onto your two cylinders preferably a 19 kilogram each um, of LP gas uh, what you'll do is make sure that all four yellow ball valves are set to the shut position um, that your needle valve indicated by number three on your operating instructions uh, found on the CD or in the printed manual um, is turned clockwise and is actually is off um, you would then open your two cylinders by a full turn each no more please um, once you're satisfied your cylinders are open I would open my primary and my secondary ball valve indicated by numbers one and two um, this will then pressurize the system you will actually see your pressure increase by turning this valve here on your actual regulator by turning it in clockwise you would be increasing the pressure turning it out or anti-clockwise will decrease the pressure now for a startup what you want is you want your pressure around about 50 kPa so once that once that is achieved you would produce a magic e breeze a piece of crumpled up newspaper or a cartridge in this case you would light it outside of your forge okay but before you light this please just do a couple of sanity checks make sure that you do not smell any gas if you smell gas obviously don't light anything um, if you do smell gas I do suggest doing a leak detection de test as described in the operating manual um, what that entails is a little soapy water in a spray bottle you'll spray it over all over the connectors um, and just see where there's little bubbles uh, that are, are occurring and you'll just tighten those connectors um, a 14 and a 17 um, millimeter uh, wrench would, would actually do that for you perfectly then uh, now systems pressurized um, you've, light, you've satisfied that there's no gas leaks you've lit your, your uh, newspaper on the outside of your forge you'll just place it right there just in the mouth of the forge because all you want to do is you want to light 
your primary burner. You would then reach back onto number three, the ball valve, and obviously don't go and stand right in front of the, the blast of, of flame. This is a heat shield, use it. Go and stand on the, on the, the side of the forge. Um, that's burning well. Open your, your needle valve. You'll hear the system pressurized gas going through the actual burners, through the nozzles, um, down the burner tube and igniting. 99.9% .9 what happens on ignition is the piece of paper gets shot out of the forge. Okay, um, And this is now obviously burning and uh, what will happen is if this is burning it falls on for instance, this table um, everything will go up in flames. Uh, now keep in mind that you are using LP gas Okay, uh, so be careful you, you do not want to do this in your living room of course. A well ventilated area preferably outside um, shielded from wind uh, nothing above the forge, nothing behind the forge. Uh, you'll notice on the on the forge feet, all four corners, there are places where you can actually fit permanently fix this forge. Please do so onto a metal. Work. Once again, this is just a preview of the idler system on the Black Dragon Forge. I'm just going to open up my primary to full. Shut off and idling again. I haven't adjusted my air intake at all, I'm just playing with LP pressure. on the bottles and as you can see I'm currently only running one 42.8 kilogram healthy where provision is by default made for two of them should you have any questions or comments regarding the black dragon forge please do not hesitate to visit 
www.blackdragonforge.co.za um, and uh, well let us know what you think uh, we do appreciate any and all photos uh, of guys forging using the forges um, and uh, you will find a, a forum on the website as well as troubleshooting information if you do experience any issues with your forge please note uh, that you contact uh, the forge manufacturers directly uh, by visiting the Thank you.